the 17th Sunday after Pentecost, year A, from the Gospel according to Matthew. By what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our readings for this week are all about authority issues. In our gospel reading, the chief priests and the elders explicitly questioned the authority by which Jesus had driven out the money changers and healed the blind and the lame there in the temple the day before. Jesus' response to them reveals their anxiety, which is about not so much his authority as their own. John's preaching, about which they're speaking, John's preaching had caught the chief priests and the elders between the power of the Roman state and the power of the crowd. When the chief priests ask by what authority Jesus himself is asking, what they really want to know is whether the authority by which Jesus is rebuking and healing is more or less powerful than these two authorities of which they are so deeply afraid. Moses finds himself quite literally between a rock and a hard place. He needs to manage the always edgy grumbling of people who are quite naturally concerned about the fact that there's no water for them and their livestock to drink. And Moses doesn't have enough authority for them to trust either his motives in leading them or his aptitude for doing so. What Moses does have, however, is his staff as a sign of God's promises and God's mighty acts. What then are the rocks God calls us to strike? And what staff of authority might we hold in our hands as we do so? Paul identifies the cross as the staff we're called to strike against the rock of sin-hardened human nature. By the cross, Jesus demonstrated to the world that God truly had taken human form so that he might break that rock and humble himself, becoming obedient to the point of death. The cross is the sign of our shared humanity, the sign of divine love gushing forth from the stone cliff of our mortality. This life-giving love is the authority by which we too are able to confront whatever seemingly overwhelming forces seem ready to flatten us as we each work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. Those forces may well be stronger than we are, but it is God who is at work in us. So we are able both to will and to work for God's good pleasure. In the name of that God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> <laughs>